managing diabetes. So these are the two issues which will come up in the way, in the process uh, when we manage diabetes. So this would be, you know, a lecture of its uh, kind, uh, which normally we don't uh, talk about. Now, uh, we will start with some questions. Should the main barriers in diabetes in achieving treatment targets are, and you know, uh, what, what we would like to make, make this session as, because now you're having some, some sweets, some cold drink, so you must be charged. So this will be kind of a random you know, answer that you throw at me. But A, B, C, D, what the August House thinks about, individually as a group, Oh, now, sir, the computer is answering the question. Thinking over the question. Yes, C. D. 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 All of the above. Right. All of the above. Fine. Next question. The main side effects in diabetes related therapy or diabetes related to therapy that poses barriers are? All of the above. All of the above. Mm. All of the above? All right? A and C. Okay. I, I, I hear a woman voice, the tenor is high, so that, that has the weight. So it is A and C. Thank you. Uh, what predicted death in a court? You know, we are, uh, in, uh, by the way, we have heard this word, I believe, I, I think there's no discord about accord. There's quite a concord about accord. The accord was a trial which uh, suddenly brought in a revolution saying that diabetes, diabetes management, you know, too much of a thought into diabetes management, stringently bringing down numbers, whether it's fasting, whether it's PP, whether it's A1C, perhaps will not do so much good to the patient that we have been thinking of all these years. So we might be careful to individualize and tailor therapy to in, you know, those patients who require the justice of those numbers. So for somebody's old, 70 years old diabetic who's come to you with a stage three, you know, grade three nephropathy, and then you, you target his A1C at six, whether you're doing the right thing. So these questions came up after the ACCORD study. So what predicted death in ACCORD? C, C, that's right. Hypoglycemia increases with the a, intensification and D, duration of diabetes. C, all of you. A. 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 Not B? No. Everybody, right? Okay. Now, this has something to do with it. I mean, we'll come to this. As you, as you grow old, as your management, if, you're, if your glycemic control is not adequate, if down, 10 years down the line, you still have a gly you know, glycemic control which is poor. Your A1C is, say, 8, 9. Um, and you are having repeated you know, hypoglycemic spells to control it is very common. So as we, what, why, why this duration of the disease? Duration of the disease per se in a controlled diabetic is not what is mentioned here. How many patients do you can control at 6 for the next 10 years? About 10%. Uh, yeah, and then this, he immediately promptly replied, and if he replied, I also have to answer. Wonderful answer. In India, there is unfortunately no data, uh, but in, in uh, something called NANIS, NANIS study is a, it, it's a national, it's a nutrition and health examination survey study done in the US for five years uh, in slots. So they have done six, almost five, actually six is not published. There they found that this, for 10 years, you cannot control even 3% of the population. The diabetic population. Hypoglycemia was most frequently associated with the following. B. 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 Yes, of course. They are secreted dogs uh, and, you know, direct. Situation. The main cause of hypoglycemia in patients with type 2 diabetes is their diabetes medication. Hypoglycemia occurs when there is an absolute 
or relative excess of therapeutic insulin in the presence of impaired counter-regulatory mechanisms. And as you age, as there's more duration of the disease, this also goes down. So therefore, chances of hypoglycemia also comes through this mechanism. The, this hypoglycemia commonly occurs when the use of insulin secretive ox or insulin is there, which raise insulin levels independently of glucose levels. Now, if you're giving a glimepiride or a glycoside or an insulin to a person who has a fasting blood sugar of 120, that will try to bring it down or plummet it to, to somewhere around 80, 60, 70. If you, if you give it to somebody with a blood sugar fasting of 200, it will try to bring it down to around 140, so 60, that fasting rate. So this is independent, this is independent of blood, blood glucose. So we must have some molecules which will actually dance to the tune of the signals from the glycemic status existing in the body at that point in time. Suppose I have, I'm having a medicine. It is supposed to bring my 200 sugar to 140. But now if my sugar is 100, then it will not work. So it will be dependent on the glucose status of my body. So if we could have some kind of a molecule like that, then that could have been the best answer to prevent hypoglycemia. Now, just a little bit of what is insulin excess? Absolute excess and relative excess. We have absolute deficiency and relative deficiency. If we have students here, DNB students, etc., then we get, you know, insulin or insulin secretive of doses which are excessive, ill-timed, or of the wrong type. This is absolute. Absolutely one indication, three points. The relatives are, if you have exogenous glucose delivery which is decreased, like you followed a meal, and you, in that followed a missed meal, you deliberately missed a meal, or you, you know, were supposed to be miss a meal, and then overnight fast, which happens in our country, so many festivals, religious rites. Glucose utilization is increased during and shortly after exercise. While you run, your muscles are getting some adequate circulation. Microcirculation in the you know, circular improves. Your, the glucose transporter mechanism improves. Your glucose is taken up by the muscles and they're, form, they're forming into uh, glycogen. Endogenous glucose production is decreased following alcohol ingestion. This is because vasodilation, etc. Sensitivity to insulin is increased. That happens in the middle of the night. We know that 3M dawn phenomenon and following weight loss or improved glycemic control. So these are the relative causes. And finally, if you have a kidney function gone, then naturally your insulin clearance is gone. So if, you're, if the patient was doing well with say 20 units of insulin per day and gradually down the years of, you know, five years down the line, his renal function is compromised, is jeopardized, then that 20 units is actually staying back in the body and serving as almost 40 units. So you need to cut down on the dose, otherwise you'll have hypoglycemia. So annual percentage of patients reporting at least one hypoglycemic episode in the Wikipedia study. See, Wikipedia was, a, you know, they, these 10, more than 10,000 people, they were recruited just at the time of diagnosis of diabetes. Mind you, they were all new onset. And they were given diet, sulfonylurea, metformin, basal insulin, basal plus pandal insulin. This were the number of patients who were hypoglycemia was seen. How many of them, like from grades 1 to grade 4, today we talk about only grade 1 to 3, but anyway, throughout the grades in 3, see quite a good number of people, and the most had hypoglycemia with basal and pandal. 21.2 was with only basal, and uh, and this is overall hypoglycemia, and very serious hypoglycemia, which needed patient, you know, patients, uh, you know, request for some assistance, was lesser, but of course higher in these two arms, and you know, and also this arm. So 0.3 and 0.1 diet and metformin were almost significantly uh, very, very minimum. But we now talk about only three grades of hypoglycemia in terms of how we manage the patient. No outside help required. You could manage with sweating and you know, some palpitation. Grade two was moderate to severe, still conscious, but you know, people came to help you. You had to feed, be fed uh, with glucose. You could catch for that glass or you know put that glucose in the glass. And severe is when you are unconscious and you're taken outside for help. The risk of hypoglycemia increases as therapy is intensified. See that we already saw. This is the same slide. 
in a different form. This is the turnover, this is a switch. You know? Diet, metformin, and then once you add sulfonylurea, what you see is 1.7 becomes 7.9 chance of hypoglycemia. So that's the first some, you know, actual oral medicine that we give everywhere in the world. But that almost multiplies the chance of hypoglycemia by six times, by almost you know, five, by two times. Severe hypoglycemia episodes increase with the duration of treatment. Patients who were treated with sulfonylurea, type 2 and type 1. Type 2 only with sulfonylurea, proportion reporting at least one episode was somewhere around, say, 1.1. Less than two years on insulin is around, say, you know, same. Now it goes up once it, the duration passes or crosses five years. Right? And then it is almost as it is equal to less than five years of insulin treatment. So here you have insulin treatment in a diabetic, here you have insulin treatment. It is more than five years, this is less than five years in a type one. And in a type one after fifteen years, this becomes this becomes even worse. And why is this so? It's because they have an inherent tendency of poor counter-regulatory mechanism. They have a problem in the pancreas, they have a problem in the beta cell as well as in the alpha cell. The beta cells are less and less working, and the alpha cells are more and more working. And if you have you know, gluco, glucagon which is being secreted as a counter-regulatory hormone, you could have had good results. Your hypoglycemia you could have checked. But as you age, as you become 15 years down the line uh, as a type 1, what happens is your alpha cells are also gone. There are amyloid fi fibrils all catching up in the cells. So your beta cells are dead, your alpha cells are dead, so your, you know, your ability to combat hypoglycemia is also gone. These are confirmed hypoglycemia increases with duration of diabetes. Almost a similar kind of study with different phases. This is again another study showing you know, the impaired renal function. So 61 years average age and 35 years, or 35 patients, right? So total 35 patients, 61 years was the average age. Patients without renal failure were younger, 33 years of age, average age, and they were, say, around 10. And with renal failure, average age was 74, they were around 25. Now this is because, you know, as you age, your chances of nephropathy comes with age also. So a total group of 35 patients, average 61 years, 24 out of these 35 individuals were hospitalized with severe hypoglycemia and loss of conscience, consciousness. And finally, they all have renal failure. So they started with this parameter, without renal failure, with renal failure. Now they all, these 24, had, these 24 had renal failure. So it is, oh, it is renal failure, the same thing, you know, your insulin which is getting collected in the body because it is not being cleared well by uh, uh, the kidneys, is actually doing double the job, triple the job. So we need to cut down on the insulin intake. Now this is a very important slide by D'Souza, uh, this is a publication by D'Souza. 